good evening. Welcome once again to Meteorology Lab. Very quiet uh, day in Texas. We're just underneath that ridge and uh, not really a whole lot going on. So let's uh, check out the maps. And we've got the moisture outlined in green here. So this is showing the dew points, and uh, where we have the darker green, that's where the higher dew points are. Looks like uh, quite a bit of moisture being brought northward by the remains of Alberta, which is heading inland. And that's going to take a track towards Tennessee, Kentucky, and ultimately up towards the Great Lakes there. The uh, northerly flow on the west side of Alberta has kind of reduced the moisture a bit. It's allowed a little bit of a backdoor front into parts of northeast Texas and eastern Oklahoma. And really about the only severe weather we've got going on is out in Colorado near this low pressure area. So a little bit of that moisture working upslope into northwest Kansas. That's helping to produce some showers there. So we'll take a look at that shortly. Closer look at the surface field. Here's what it looks like in Texas. We, we've seen the moisture come down from 68 to uh, 71 down to 66 to 63 across much of North Texas there and even up in Oklahoma. Very similar pattern there. Temperatures only struggling to get into the mid 80s. The dry line is well out to the west. We can see that out there. Uh, let's see, we've got zero degrees dew point at uh, Hobbs. And we contrast that with 51 at Lubbock and 52 at Sweetwater. And that puts the dry line about right in that area there, the western West Texas counties. And we have a few t um, tools, which I'm going to show you here shortly, for helping to find that dry line. And then out over Colorado, we can see uh, a frontal system which is uh, making its way southward through the high plains and you can see the cool temperatures in that area northerly flow all the way down to Pueblo and La Junta and it looks like the leading edge of that front is about like that right there probably not what we're showing here and let's uh, take a look look at a couple of other charts and uh, this is the NHC summary graphic showing Alberto coming on short sustained winds of uh, 35 knots in that and the friction is really tearing apart that system at this time. The uh, satellite is uh, looking like that right there. We'll run an animation of that and there it is coming on shore. A couple of weak uh, spiral bands making their way into Georgia and Alabama. And you can see that the extent of this rain has not really gone much further west than about Mobile. So it's definitely a very compact system. So that'll be heading up towards the Montgomery area tonight and then possibly up to around Huntsville and Nashville over the next day or two. Okay, this is uh, one way of finding the dry line. I'm going to start introducing a few new charts. This is the lifted condensation level. And we'll show you what things uh, looked like uh, last night. This is about midnight. And the dry line uh, was somewhere in this area right there. And that's basically mixing, or I'm sorry, advecting westward. You can see the rapid increase in moisture in eastern New Mexico right in this area here. And that's bringing the LCLs down to about 1 to 1.5 kilometers. And then around uh, dawn, looks like the dry line is right around here. So this product actually um, outlines it pretty well. And up in Colorado we can see that front very similarly, the high route of humidity air helping to lower the LCLs up in that region. And then once we get the heating, the dry line starts advecting, or I should say mixing, eastward. See that? It's on the move as we get into midday. and the LCLs go up to, there's the scale right there, up to about five kilometers, showing that this is pretty much all part of the uh, free atmosphere there. So that's helping to form the EML that spreads across this region right here and helps form the cap. So the latest frame we have is about uh, right here. And we can use that to place the dry line, very similar position to what we had on the uh, surface graphic there. 
So that's one more tool you can use. And this is uh, one way of tracking the moisture here. This is an uh, animation. This is sub hourly dew point starting about, uh, I guess, about midnight last night. So, what I'm kind of doing is uh, looking at the trends here. Kansas, they've had a lot of that thunderstorm activity there. And I'll set that at the very start. I've frozen that. And you can see the better moisture down there in Oklahoma and those yellows. That corresponds to dew points right around uh, 65. So let me roll that forward and we can uh, watch the moisture flow up towards northwest Kansas and I'm going to start that right now. So keep an eye down here in western Oklahoma. So you can see those southeasterly winds carrying the moisture up into the uh, Garden City area. This is about 5 in the morning. And at this point, this is about 9 in the morning, you can see this low coming together in southeast Colorado. This is kind of a bare clinic low. So the front is uh, trying to advex southward towards Raton. There's a bit of a warm front sector up in this region. And of course the dry line extending southward into New Mexico. And uh, one thing you'll see as we bring this forward, you'll see this moisture disappear. And there it goes, the very strong solar heating. And that cold front looks like it uh, retreats a little bit due to that very strong heating in the uh, Trinidad and Raton area. So the latest frame I have is about right there. It's going to be about 4 p.m. And that shows that the uh, moisture axis appears to be concentrated from about just west of Oklahoma City to about Dodge City and on up towards North Platte. So using that, we can kind of visualize the, the air masses. And it looks like the dry line is uh, just east of Kit Carson, extending southward, something like that right there. And that's a triple point region right there near that uh, cold front. And the winds are actually pretty favorable there. Southeast winds about 15 to 20 knots. So that's definitely going to help lengthen the bottom couple of kilometers of the hodograph. All right, let's go ahead and head into the uh, other data I have here, SPC. This is the storm reports. These are preliminary. A couple of tornado touchdowns around uh, Kit Carson, another one near Hill City. And there's the comments on that. The Hill City tornado was a little bit earlier. Spotter reported. Looked like a rope land spout in that area. I'm sorry, that's for Iowa there. And let me scroll down to the Kit Carson area, and there's the comp comments on that. Two and potentially three tornadoes on the ground in open fields. So looks like a little bit of photogenic action in that region. We are a little bit uh, more active as far as the SPC outlook areas. Got an enhanced risk right there in a tornado box for northwest Kansas. And there we go, there's the uh, watch box right there. And then I'll just give you the uh, convective outlooks real quick. We'll bring that up. The day one, of course. Focusing on western Kansas there. And then the day two outlook uh, pushes that into the, looks like the Pratt, I guess, uh, Kingman area right there. South Looks like southwest to west of Wichita. And there's how things look right now. We've got a little bit of a mesoscale convective system there in western Oklahoma. And looks like a couple of uh, more elevated storms there in Colorado. The moisture supply a little bit weaker in that area. Although it looks like a few 60s have snuck up into the Akron area. See that right there? It actually looks like some pretty, that's uh, certainly some decent moisture for this time of year in the high plains. Anything up above 55 to 60 is definitely significant. So that easterly component that's helping to back the hodographs in that area, helping to support uh, rotating storms. All right, we'll go ahead and zoom things out and uh, look at the upper levels, 250 millibar analysis. 
This is how it looks today. It looks like that low is pulling out of the Great Basin area, bringing the jet stream with it. So the higher winds entering New Mexico now. It's not quite out into the high plains yet. Seeing maybe about 30 to 40 knots this morning, but I guess some of that is starting to rotate into eastern Colorado. Got to keep in mind this is a 7 a.m. chart. So, yeah, it looks like that Jet Max is probably going to vect out into that area this evening. So we'll watch for it in that area. And then a look at the 700 millibar chart. Shows the uh, cap strength about the same as yesterday. 12s, 13s across much of Texas, keeping things shut down. And then around the periphery, 8s out in East Texas, but uh, the lack of moisture and uh, warm temperatures is keeping storms down. So about the only place we have really for organized convection is western Kansas and uh, Colorado. All right, we'll check in on the uh, thickness and isobars. And there's how things uh, look like this evening. You can see Alberta coming on shore right there. The uh, stronger thickness gradients are well up in Canada and uh, the Pacific Northwest. That's going to be a cold front up in that area and then across Manitoba out to Ontario, a warm front. So things are definitely moving north as we would expect as we get into June. Looks like maybe a very weak frontal system possible in New Mexico and Arizona. Looks like the air mass is a little cooler in the Four Corners area. So that's probably helping to support that upper level trough in that region. And let's see, I don't have the NAM graphics loaded yet, so I'm going to go ahead and head over to the uh, satellite. We'll take a look at that action there on the Great Plains. And let's see, we've probably got kind of a slow night in chat. Well, 34, I guess. Not so slow. I was kind of concerned there because I accidentally uh, set the stream to unlisted when I was doing some tests earlier. And I didn't f fix that until about 17 minutes ago. So my apologies if you couldn't find the stream earlier. I think that's uh, pretty much fix there. So let me get our chat going, see how things are looking there. Uh, Willow Greenway in Georgia, welcome to the webcast again. Dean Benedict also, Justin Pulliam, Fun with Tech, Electric Dog, Clyde Hoadley in Colorado. Storms missed him. Carl Burkhoff, 75 miles to the southwest of him, some storms. Patrick Motes reporting showers in southeast Tennessee. Dean Benedict, 70, and sunset in northwest Pennsylvania. Uh, Justin Pulliam, like in the uh, 720. I'm glad that's working out. Let's see how many drop frames we have. Zero. Yeah, that's incredible there. There's my... Uh, streaming software and you can see the zero drop frames. I, I'm amazed. I guess we can probably start doing some of these high quality streams and that's good timing there with uh, the drone footage. Uh, Burl H reporting a hot day in Iowa. Air mass storms brought relief to his area, 87 degrees. Ron Chalfont, Southern California. Michelle Carlin in Ventura, overcast and cool. Ryan Toomey is drying out there in South Florida, overcast skies. But I'm sure that moisture is being advected northward from the Caribbean, bringing in those very high precipitable water values. Sue M. reporting a 3,000 Cape, southern Indiana, 2 to 3 inches of rain this week expected. Major rain event for the east Midwest states, Ohio, yeah, definitely there. And hello to uh, Jeff Crobb and... He's reporting uh, some, he's down on the eastern shore, about 150 miles away, amazing video. Carl Berghoff uh, looking for some good lightning tonight. Yeah, I really like the uh, lightning on these uh, 
Go 16 products. Let me see if I can bring that up here. They've got this overlay here. I'll show you how to get to that. You click on this product overlay and go to the uh, Go 16 GLM flashes. We can take advantage of uh, the it's loading right now, so it's flickering a bit, but you can take advantage there of the uh, lightning detection on the GO satellite. So definitely very energized there in western Kansas and eastern Colorado. Looks like one very strong storm just north of, uh, I guess, in the Burlington area. And let me go ahead and freeze frame that. That's the, uh, the last frame we have, and I've got a couple of uh, zoomed in frames. Let's uh, look there at Colorado or at Kansas. And this is how things uh, looked earlier this morning. And what you see here is uh, an outflow boundary up uh, around the Hill City and I guess that would be about, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember, uh, Oakley, just south of uh, Garden, or, yeah, just south of Goodland, okay. So anyway, yeah, there's going to, there's an outflow boundary right there. These storms have been pretty persistent along that boundary. You can see that one multi-cell right there, and then we roll that along, and you can see the, the difference in the cloud texture. Here we have the transverse bands north of that boundary. This is kind of a cooler, more stable air mass. And then down to the south we've got the cloud streets. So that shows you the uh, difference in the air mass. And you would definitely look at something like that as a uh, chase target. So you can see the uh, cells going up just uh, north of Garden City and Dodge City right in this area here. Some more storms along the dry line out in the uh, western counties and of course Colorado where the uh, capping is weaker that stuff also ends up firing. So a lot of possible targets and at this time we've just got anvils and a couple of overshoots. Let me try uh, checking out Colorado. We'll see how this uh, looked earlier. Okay, starting out uh, earlier today, looks like a lot of stratus and uh, low ceilings across Colorado. So the uh, cold front is kind of up in this area right here. However, impinging on the front is uh, very moist southeasterly winds. So once we start breaking up that overcast as the uh, morning progresses, You can see how things look later. It looks like the uh, front is kind of in this area right there. Outflow boundary intersection right there around Burlington. And then we start breaking up some of that overcast and get the uh, sun in. Things become very unstable and you can see these storms firing right around Lyman. So that's the uh, first cell right there. And let's see how that progresses. Yeah, that thing looks uh, really good. You can see the flanking line right there. And then this would be about uh, 5 o'clock central, 4 o'clock mountain time. And that's the cell that produced a couple of uh, tornadoes there around uh, Kit Carson. So yeah, we're getting some really nice imagery with this uh, Go 16 stuff. And uh, that's the latest we have there on Alberta. I'll freeze frame that, but it looks like the center of the circulation is crossing over into Alabama. Okay, this is probably a good time to do a couple of scooties. We've got a very good picture of the air mass. So let's switch over to the uh, scooty tabs. And uh, I think we're going to start out, we're going to do this evening scooties, assuming the data is in.
So starting out with Fort Worth, uh, we've seen a decrease in the uh, storm activity. And uh, here's what the sounding looks like. Let me get everything lined up. All right, so very weak low-level flow southeast at about five knots, but aloft. It appears we do have some support if we were to get any storms going. Got about 70 to 80 knots up there at about 200 millibars. But the strong cap right here, this is what's shut things down. The cap is centered right around 700 millibars. Temperatures at 700 are about 12 Celsius, which is on the strong side. So I'm getting 12 by taking that point there where it extends furthest over to the right, and then I go down and read the scale down here at the bottom. So that gives me 12. So that's about 54 Fahrenheit up there at about 10,000 feet. And if we try to lift a uh, parcel against that, see a mixed parcel is going to be about like that right there. We've got a uh, ton of capping. That's probably convective inhibition of about 400 to 600. In fact, uh, let me see if I can see what it shows here. Yeah, it's going with about 300, actually. In any case, it's very strong, 300 to 400, and you can see very little convective inhibition, or very little cape would be realized from any uh, parcels that do go up. All right, uh, let's head up to uh, the Dodge City area, see what the soundings look like in that area this evening. Cap uh, looks quite a bit weaker. So lifted parcels are going to be set up something like that right there. So very little capping. No wonder we have numerous storms in that area. And some fairly steep lapse rates from 700 to 500 millibars. It's almost a dry adiabatic there. And let me just take a quick look and uh, see how things looked earlier. The morning soundings at Dodge City. Let's see what those look like. Moisture actually looks a little bit scarce this morning at Dodge City. Only topping out at about 840 millibars there. So that's all the moisture we had this morning. However, uh, we can definitely see there's a lack of a cap. So all we had to do is add a little bit of heating and a little bit of moist advection coming in from the uh, southeast right there. And uh, that gives us pretty good uh, situation there for convective storms later in the day. There's a 30 knot low level jet coming up from the south. And we've got strong winds up from the mid to the upper levels. Not particularly strong, only about 30 to only about 40 to 50 knots, but still that's uh, not too bad. All right, yeah, let's head into our forecast here. Yeah, we'll start out with a high-resolution rapid refresh. There's our MCS there in western Kansas. Then we have the upslope sto storms in Colorado. So two uh, very active areas. And then overnight, we're just going to see things moving to the northeast. So it's taking kind of a track like that because of the amplified upper-level flow. Got that trough just out to the, the west there. But in Colorado, that uh, storm area looks like that comes together pretty well. Remember, up in that area, you can see the winds out of the east right there, bringing almost 60s dew points. So a lot of things are coming together for organized storms in far northeastern Colorado. So those are going to keep cranking overnight and maybe finally start dying off towards about 5 to 6 in the morning out along the Kansas-Nebraska border. So possibly some good lightning displays later tonight. Taking a look at the upper levels, we'll, this will kind of give us the key to what's happening overnight into the next uh, couple days. So we've got this trough that is uh, ejecting northeastward. That's one reason things are so active there in Colorado, the height falls and uh, the cool air aloft. It's very hard to get a cap when you're close to a trough like this. Your cap is usually found where we have the ridging such as in Texas and Oklahoma. So let's take a quick look at a, a forecast sounding there for southern Oklahoma. And you can see the, uh, the cap right there. 
keeping things suppressed. Also, uh, in these ridges, we tend to get warm conditions aloft, so the entire line tends to shift over to the uh, right. So that doesn't help very much with uh, Cape. So over the next couple of days, we'll see that trough lift up into the, the uh, Dakotas. Probably an active day tomorrow there. Nebraska all the way up to uh, South Dakota. The remnants of Alberta coming into northern Alabama and Tennessee. So it looks very rainy in that area. Looks like an MCS overnight. Kansas and Nebraska for tomorrow night. So it looks like a lot of rain there. That's probably good for the uh, farming belt. Then going into Wednesday, it looks like a bit of ridging start, starting to enter the picture here. That may uh, shut things down a little bit. But it looks like we got more troughing out to the uh, west. So the next bit of energy, that could be something. I'm not 100% sure. There's a lot of noise in these mesoscale model products. But uh, that could certainly be a wave moving up into the uh, Dakotas. Anyway, the stronger flow is mostly going to be affecting Colorado northward. So I don't really expect a whole lot there for Texas until later in the week. And here we go with another trough going into the Great Basin area later this week. And that will probably have an effect there around the uh, Panhandles by probably as early as Friday but uh, most likely on Saturday. So we'll just put it together really quickly. It's kind of a stagnant weather pattern. There goes all the uh, moisture with Alberto coming northward. You can see some evidence of the backdoor front in Texas and Oklahoma. See that right there? There's kind of a weak pressure gradient. I'm going to draw the lines. And what this is kind of showing is a little bit of high pressure in this area and a little bit of a low right there in the panhandles. So instead of getting flow from the Gulf, we're getting flow more from Arkansas into Texas. So that's going to kind of couple there with the uh, ridging to dry things out. So things will be active up north and uh, overnight. Yeah, there's an MCS there in Kansas. Then tomorrow, Looks like redevelopment around uh, the Hill City, Russell area, especially on that tail end, probably some good storms there. Those will move eastward into uh, Kansas. Looks like more storms further south. So central Kansas looks pretty active. I think maybe Great Bend would be a good chase target, maybe Pratt. Bit of an MCS overnight. There goes the remnants of Alberto into Indiana. NAM has always been kind of west with the tracks, so I'm not too sure if that track is accurate. Uh, we could be seeing more something like that, giving Ohio a bit more rain. But at this point, all we can do is really uh, compare and contrast the models. Anyway, it looks like a pretty good heat low down there in Texas. There it is right there. So it looks like by Thursday, maybe a couple of showers there in the panhandles. And then we're going to start getting that troughing out from the western U.S. later in the week. So hopefully that will start breaking down the ridge a little bit more. So that's uh, the last NAM frame I have there for Thursday night. So we'll switch off to the uh, GFS. For Friday, let's see how things look on Friday. Southerly flow, we're starting to open up the Gulf there in Texas, but I can see the ridging, thermal ridging indicating probably weak upper level flow. A little bit of uh, dry line storms being indicated there around San Angelo down to I-10. Probably very spotty there. Anyway, the next front uh, comes south around Saturday. There it is right there. So it looks like uh, maybe a chance of storms around Kansas City. Yeah, there they are going up around, uh, that's going to be around Friday night. Then probably a bit of an overnight MCS moving towards St. Louis. High pressure coming back in behind. So by midday Saturday, oh, where are we? Hang on a second. Okay, I'm sorry, that was for Saturday. 
yeah, Saturday night storms into St. Louis there and down in Texas, cold front pushing in. So we might get a little bit of low-level forcing along that front. See what happens, and then things move eastward into the southeast U.S. Anyway, a bit of upslope starting to develop there in Texas around Monday. So storms re-enter the picture. Looks like some very strong thickness falls out at, in the uh, northwest U.S. Looks like a little bit of cold air really developing in the northwest, helping to really strengthen that low level, that I'm sorry, that upper level jet. So things look a bit, a little bit stormy out in that region next week. We start out with a little bit of high plains action around uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Here comes another front coming into the uh, central plains. This is around Thursday next week. And really, I think anywhere from Kansas down to Texas has some uh, decent storm potential. Looks like uh, the flow may be a little bit weak, though. I can see the ridging is back once again. That ridging seems to be very persistent, but not too surprising because we've kind of been under this uh, long wave ridging for quite a while. That tends to reinforce these uh, ridges as they build in. Anyway, Kansas, yeah, Kansas, Nebraska, that's going to be a good place there for chase operations. Not so good for Texas. All right. That's probably about all I got for tonight. One last uh, look at chat. Let me bring the window over and see what's going on. Uh, Carl Berghoff discussing the uh, flooding in Maryland, the videos. Trying to get the uh, chat window working here. Yeah, you see, this is what happens a lot. I've got this window kind of flashing, and that kind of slows me down a little bit. All right. <laughs> Something about a, my shirt? Yeah, I grabbed the uh, same shirt I had on last night. You know, it's the weekend. Uh, let's see here. 73 in Michigan. New trend of beer smoothies in South Florida. Tired of the uh, triple digits there. Yeah, it seems like we're kind of edging closer to that here in Texas. Yesterday was uh, definitely a hot one, 64, or we were up to about 94, 95 degrees there. Uh, Ron Chalfant, appreciate the uh, comments. Another system in the Gulf, yeah. Getting to be at that about that time of the year. Willie Greenway, nice work. Trying out G GR Level 2. And yeah, I definitely use that all the time there. Okay, that's probably about all i got for tonight. I appreciate you all uh, joining the webcast. And uh, we will see you tomorrow. So take care. Let's get that music queued up, and uh, we will see you uh, tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.